viene muchísima gente. Yo le prometo cosas a mi mujer todos los días, mi hermano. Tranquilo, ya encontrarás a otro que te va a quedar bien. Yo no puedo aceptar tu renuncia, Jorge. Con todo el respeto del mundo, ya tengo unas cosas... Las cosas, cosas se pueden cambiar, ¿no? Mira, nosotros no estamos en el sitio donde estamos porque la gente buena se nos haya ido. Yes, Witam yes. Was bardzo serdecznie w kolejnym odcinku Kruszermaniaka. Dzisiaj moim gościem jest wyjątkowy gość, szwedzki aktor Matthias Varela. Uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, hi and welcome to the next episode of Kruszermaniak. Um, today I have a very special guest from Sweden, uh, Mr. Matthias Varela. I'm uh -huh. Mateusz, you are Matthias, so we are met you, I think. That's, yeah, that's pretty close, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and you are played to Rise It by Wolves, Narcos, uh, Assassin's Creed, and even, even more, the great rule uh, acting. Mm, mm -hmm. And let's start from the beginning. So, uh, you always want to be the, an actor? Um, I, when I was like uh, a kid, mm -hmm. growing up, um, I grew up, um, my parents are Spanish. So I grew up in a working class environment and, uh, you know, uh, go, after school I used to watch movies and dream about uh, working in the movie industry. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously my parents were not in the industry, they were normal people, so uh, it didn't seem too too possible for me. But yeah, I, I, I guess I wanted to do it since I was quite small, yeah. And you are played to the Swedish uh, criminals uh, to, for the beginning, because it's yeah, so I did, popular. I did, yeah. Yes, and now you play to the Hollywood big series. Uh, so, mm -hmm. how do people from Europe can play for that big dream, Hollywood dream? How you do that? I think uh, there's a couple of ways to 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 go about it. I mean, there's. I think the the most natural way mm -hmm. is that usually what happens is that a European actor, he might be Polish, he might be Spanish, he might be Swedish, wherever he's from. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do something at home that becomes very successful mm -hmm. in on your home market, usually the Americans or the international movie community nowadays they they will know sooner or later they will find your ass they will be like hmm, there's a movie here in czechoslovakia that's doing really fucking well or in the czech republic or in the ukraine uh, or anywhere in the world wherever you might be if you do something because of internet sooner or later they will be like hmm, i wonder who this is and uh, and then they might call you and say hi my name is you know so and so uh, would you like to come to los angeles or do you do you want representation in, mm -hmm. in los angeles uh in in my particular i mean also like if you're i mean like i'm not that type of actor let's be honest you know i'm not i'm a pretty normal person um i'm not extremely attractive you know i'm not two meters tall or have icy blue eyes and i don't look like a supermodel if you do look like a supermodel uh, then but you, you should... have predisposition for the many rules you play so yeah 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 so Yes. Mm -hmm. No, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, 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 you know, I think, uh, uh, I think what, I mean, today, I mean, I'm 41 years old. So when I started in, in the, in the movie industry, internet was quite new. So back then, um, mm -hmm. it was a bit more difficult nowadays, you know, you can, I mean, we're doing an interview. Where are you right now? I'm in Poland now. You're in Poland. I'm in Stockholm. I mean, and we can see each other as you were sitting in front of me. So nowadays, because of technology, it's much easier to make that leap between mm -hmm. uh, working, for example, in Polish films and then making the leap over to Hollywood because the world is so connected. Mm -hmm. So uh, the casting agents, they will see stuff. Uh, also, because of 
shows like Narcos that I was lucky enough to be a part of, uh, the American audience and the international audience today accept uh, drama in all types of languages. Not It used to be when we were kids, we only watched stuff either in our language mm-hmm. or in English. Uh, nowadays, you know, one of the most watched series is Squid Games. That shit is in, in Korean. I mean, that's very yeah, far Squid from... Games is very popular in worldwide. In too. Yeah, and I mean, like, I mean, from Polish to Korean, that's quite a leap. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, 15 so years ago. people, that's stranger. So the Korean, Asian, but we are like this series. So much. No, no, exactly. So, Everybody loves it. And, 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 my, and my, my point is that I think that nowadays uh, the audience, because of Facebook mm-hmm. and Instagram and, and, and all of these social media, we are more tolerant to foreign cultures. We are not so, uh, uh, let's say, we're interested in watching stuff r- regardless of the language. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, actually, Narcos, which I remember watching the first season, uh, I was shooting a movie called Point Break, a remake of the old uh, uh, movie. And I watched the show and everybody was watching it. Every fucking body all over the world. I mean, and I was amazed because I was like, fuck, that, this is in Spanish. Like most of the show is in Spanish. And I was shooting because Point Break, we shot that like in 14 countries. We were going all over the fucking place. And I remember... Everybody was talking about the show. Wherever we went, people were watching it. And then I realized then and there. And like, now okay, you are international star too. So I don't know about that, but you know, I, I, I know that I realized that there's a possibility that people start will start watching shows that are not necessarily in English. And and uh, you know, and, and look at us now. I mean, again, Squid Game or Squid Games. That's you know. I think it's the most most watched show on Netflix ever, and and uh, even in America, and and I think it's fascinating, and and um, yeah. So we change. learn to new culture too. Uh, exactly. Yes, but in Sweden, uh, you are have the very good skills to English languages. In Poland, mm-hmm. it's not too much. So maybe that you are so popular to the Hollywood productions. Maybe that's the point. That's, the that's, point. One, that's one thing, definitely. I mean, Sweden is a country where most people speak very good English. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, so, and also, like, there's a tradition, there's, a com- there's like a uh, connection between America and Sweden because a lot of Swedish people have emigrated to America in the early 1900s. And um, so I think that's one thing. And then also, uh, I'm not ethnically Swedish myself, even though I was raised here. You know, my parents were Spanish, but Swedish people, they're, you know, they look like Vikings. Uh, they, you know, they're tall, they're blonde, usually. They have uh, blue or green eyes. And, and uh, traditionally, mm-hmm. in the last couple of hundred years, at least, that's been perceived as beautiful. Like, that's what people... Um, think is attractive. I mean, I'm not saying that I think it's attractive or that they are more attractive than anyone else, but uh, because of how pop culture looks, that kind of um, look has been the ideal for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of Swedish people are working in Hollywood because they, not only uh, are they talented, but there's talented people all over the world. But I think that because of that blue eyes and being tall and blonde, that that attracts, um, you know, uh, attracts people to hire them in, in, in these um, big productions. Yes, you have predisposition not national because uh, Abba, uh, Stellan Skarsgård, too, is the big, big star in Hollywood, to Avengers, uh, Mamma Mia movies. But tell yes. me, uh, your friendship with uh, Augustav Skarsgård, mm-hmm. yes? So yes. Uh, this is a very famous actor's family around the world from Sweden. So yes. that's, uh, that's helped you in career? He's helped you sometimes? Uh, I, mean, not, I mean, I would like to say yes, but I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> not, <laughs> not in that sense. I think that 
uh, it's like what's helped me is that he. You played together has, for one movies, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, we have. We did a show together back like a bunch of years ago with the guy who did Chernobyl. Uh, the the showrunner and the creator of Chernobyl and me Gustav mm -hmm. uh, did a show called Ones and Zeros, and then we done a movie that's on Netflix now that's called 438 Days. That's yes, a good yes. movie. This is that movie. Mm -hmm. It came out like uh, two years ago, maybe. Uh, I think that to answer your question, what's been helpful being friends mm -hmm. with Gustav is that through him, mm -hmm. I have learned more than I would have learned without being friends with him. Just, you know, what the business is like, what the craft, what, what being an actor is, how it works, you know, all of these things uh, I could not learn from, from home. Mm -hmm. You know, I, uh, my, my parents are normal people. My mom is a teacher. I mean, um, and she started working late when I was about 20 years old. And uh, my father was in the restaurant business. So that's very far from acting. Mm -hmm. um, I worked in construction up until I was 29 years old. And so, you know, being friends with Gustav and uh, getting to hang out with them, uh, it was like going to school. You know, I learned mm -hmm. through their lifestyle. I learned and prepared myself to to an eventuality that I might, you know, end up being an actor one day. Mm -hmm. What's changed to, uh, what's difference to play in European production or Hollywood production? I hear the one Polish actor say, uh, we are shooting 10 times maximum one scenes in Hollywood, 17, 18, uh, 80, 80 times uh, shooting. Because yes. everything must to be perfect. That is true. Yes, yes that's true. The the one biggest difference is obviously uh, the scale, the budget, mm -hmm. which makes them be able to do a scene, you know, a hundred times if they have to. Like you just shoot that motherfucker until it's done. I mean, they don't give a fuck if it's. I mean, I've been on movies. Mm -hmm. uh, we shot. Uh, an entire movie, a hundred million dollar movie, and uh, they weren't happy with it. We went back and shot another month. You know, um, it's like, um, you know, they be like, they you shoot. I remember on Narcos, we shot a scene, and it's expensive, you know, and mm. you know, you're in Colombia, know. you know, it's, you know, it's people all over the place, and uh, we shot the scene, and a week later, Eric Newman, who's a friend and uh, my my old boss on Narcos, he was like, I'm, I'm, I was looking at the scene. I don't really like it. I, I don't know. I think that you should be a little bit. Hey, Peña. Hola. Can we talk? Yeah. Give me a second. Pon el radio sobre el tablero y las manitas en el timón. Es to be tired and boring too if you again, again, again shooting that same scene. So I think, I mean, I'll tell you, you know, it's like. There's, you have to like be able to find um, to find the passion in trying to make it perfect. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, it's a living and breathing process, and you know sometimes just small things changes, and uh, and uh, but nothing and, frustrating to you reshooting and and it, that's in, in not enough. That must to be frustrating for for actors. I think. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I mean, for my, I mean, I don't, I can't speak for, for, you know, the entire community, but I'll say this from my point of view. I'm just happy I'm doing this as a living, you know? Mm -hmm. 
so I mean, yeah, sometimes it can be like, oh, again, are you, are you fucking serious? But, you know, you, you just do it and you'd be happy because you're getting paid for something that you love to do. It's like, uh, you know, and, and practice makes perfect. Obviously, uh, you know, sometimes it can be quite uh, hard physically if you're doing an action movie you know, and you're doing some kind of stunt or some kind of, uh, you know, action sequence and you're just exhausted. You're so fucking tired and you need to do it again. Sometimes you're like, mm-hmm. you think you're going to die. <laughs> but again, you know, you're getting paid to do what you love. Hopefully you love. And, uh, and, uh, and um, you know, life can be much harder than, than doing a couple of extra takes. But the big difference between Europe and and America or or Hollywood and the rest of the uh, industry is the money. Mm-hmm. Hollywood just have they have so much money that they can do whatever they want. I mean, literally, there's just no end to the possibilities. I, I'm telling you. For example, there's on race by. I mean, I'm 41. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not a big star, but I've done a lot of big, I mean, I've, I've done a couple of big productions, you know, I've been on a couple of hundred million plus shows and like a half a year ago, I get to Cape Town, we're going to do this scene, me and Travis, you know, Ma- Marcus from fucking Vikings and all of us, not Marcus, what's his name in Vikings? Ragnar, yeah, yeah. So me Ragnar. and Ragnar mm-hmm. and the boys, you know, we're doing this we're scene. We're Lucius, uh, Lucius. I'm, I'm Lucius and Lucius. he's uh, and he's Marcus. Do you know these uh, lines from the scriptures? Song lines of the sun is sung, shadowy night rains. Raining in your raining. room, we pray to Saul, his saving light to guide us through the gloom. Yeah. So that's not scripture, that's a lullaby. Every Mithraic child knows it. And we're doing this scene, right? And, mm-hmm. and, and this is just one scene. And uh, we're doing this scene, and uh, I, I get to set, and the set is, I mean, it's the size of a football, a football field. Mm-hmm. It's just so fucking big. There's like a thousand people there. There's like big cranes holding up blue screens. There's um, wind machines the size of like helicopter fa- I mean it's so you must crazy. imagine so much things because you have green screen back blue screen yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything is the CGI yeah but you know what you know what you know what I think that a lot of people don't know so I'm gonna tell you right now so all of you that watch your interviews uh, can know this so the thing is this the more expensive the show is Mm-hmm. the less blue screen. So they actually, when you look at Race by Wolves, for example, all of that shit is there. Like the spaceships we walk in and all of that stuff, it's actually built. And what they do, I'll give you an example. Mm-hmm. So how they use the blue screen and the CGI is that, let's say I'm sitting here in this couch, I'm in my home, and mm-hmm. so uh, in, th- in that window, there's supposed to be a different planet outside, yeah? Planet, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they will build this entire fucking room. Everything. They will, build, they will build everything here. Everything they will build. This is amazing. And, and then they will just, in the, in the window, then they will put the CGI in the window. So everything's there. So which makes it much easier for, for us actors to just like walk into set and like, okay, the... Here, the, the pillow is there, the couch is real, uh, everything's there. So, like, even the surf practical the effect is better, I think. So, for sure. And nowadays, what they do is they mix it. So, they mix the practical stuff with the CGI. That's, 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 that's what yes. they do yeah. most of the time. I can see that you are suffering. But if you help me bring purity to this planet, I promise you that you will find peace again. And the only thing that's gonna bring purity to this planet, Marcus, is your death. Let's agree to disagree for now, okay? I'll be waiting for you if you change your mind, Lucius. Don't hold your breath. 
So in Rises in Wolves, uh, you play Lucius. You think this is a good one character, bad one. I'm asking because um, be Believer is very crazy on the humanity, but mm -hmm. the the rest is the machines. He buildings a community. So I really don't know what side is good, what side is bad. This is so crazy and that inspiring me. What do you think about that? Your I character think, is good, is bad? You know what I think? I think he's human. And being human is, is a complex thing. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like, I don't think he's a good person, but I don't think he's a bad person either. I just think he's a person. And most of us uh, are just trying to do the best we can. And I think that what I like about Lucius is that even though he's a fundamentalist, mm -hmm. he still, he, he, he does believe he's doing, he, he thinks he's doing the right thing. He's not necessarily doing the right thing, but he believes he's doing the right thing. And that is something that it's least a sign of empathy. He has empathy and compassion. So that, I guess that makes him more good than bad in a sense. You know what I mean? I know. And I think that that is something that I've always interested me personally. You know, a lot of actors will say, eh, I like this kind of part. And I always want you like, yeah, yeah, motherfucker. Like you, you get the job you get and then you do whatever you do with the job. So in my case, for some reason that's bigger than me, I usually get to play characters that are like in between, you know, they're like usually characters that are doing bad stuff, but they're trying to do good stuff. Like my and character. That's more interesting for, for the audience, I think. I think so. Yeah. Like that's the kind of stuff that I get to do. You know, usually when they call me, I already know when my, when I see my agent's number on the phone, they're not going to call me and tell me, yes, we want, they, they called um, you from this production company and they want you to play the lover. All the women, the, the character is like all the women in the world love you. Uh, that's not what they, they don't call me for that. They'll call somebody else. When they call me, it's usually like, yeah, the guy is a police officer, but he's a drug addict. Or like, he's a gangster, but he wants to take care of his children. Or... Uh, he's uh, he's a soldier and he's killing people, but he wants to help out. You know, so there's always that kind of, in, in, how do you say it in English? Ambiguity, like somebody nice doing bad stuff or somebody bad uh, <laughs> trying to do good stuff. So, you know, so there's always that, you know. Like in uh, Narcos, I think. Yes, exactly. Exactly like that. So the turning point you're international career was Netflix and Narcos on, and your brilliant performance, of course. Um, Thank you, I appreciate or, it. Or maybe that's in Assassin's Creed, you think? I think, mm -hmm. I think, I mean, it, you know, like, uh, it just depends on how you see, I think for the, for, for maybe for the audience, uh, most people that recognize me whenever they, that happens is usually, if it's outside of Sweden, it's usually because of Narcos or Raised by Wolves. But I think what kind of opened the door for me uh, in the beginning was when I was, in, I was in a show called The Borgias. I don't know if you remember that one with Jeremy Irons plays the Pope. Uh, yes, yes, like, yes. You remember that one? The Bo Borgia family. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. And, uh, and uh, so I, I, I was in a couple of episodes of The, of the Borgias and I, I played the evil king. I was like a king uh, of Naples. Yes, I uh, remember. Mm -hmm. And I got to fuck with, uh, with Jeremy Irons. I, you know, I was like one of the few characters that were sort of not respectful to him. So I had a scene, uh, like I think it was my first international, it was like one of my first international scenes when Jeremy Irons, mm -hmm. you know, being Jeremy Irons, you know, He's like... Uh, he's a big star, of course. This is, yeah, he's a big star, you know. And, you know, you grew up watching him. And, and he was like, um, kind of saying to me, like, yes, this is what it is. 
And I'm, the scene, I'm basically telling, I, I basically said to him, you know, like, go fuck yourself. And, um, and I think that that was the moment where uh, sort of some people maybe noticed me a little bit. That's what I, I mean, that's in my head. I don't know. Maybe I think so. Mm-hmm. And how it's working with a movie master like Ridley Scott? This hard it's, work? Yeah, you? it's crazy. It's crazy because it's like, it's like, how do you explain that? It's like winning the lottery. You know, mm-hmm. like Ridley Scott, he's a, you know, undeniably one of the biggest directors in the history of movie making. And he's 82 or like 83 or 81. I mean, he's been around a long time so when my agents told me that uh, yes you got the part i was like what the fuck are you talking about uh yeah you got the part in the show it's difficult to like you know accept almost like wrap your head around you're like uh what am i gonna work for ridley scott is he my boss now like, yes of course. it's yeah. crazy you know it's crazy and it's like um Just being a part of that universe, it's it's very difficult to 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 not feel um, humbled. I mean, like I laughed the other day. I was talking to somebody uh, on Raised by Wolves, and he said, "Like, isn't it amazing we work with Ridley Scott?" And I said, "I don't know what the fuck you're talking about because." I don't work with Ridley Scott. I work for Ridley Scott. I'm just an employee. That's it. I'm one out of a thousand people. So when I get to set on, on Race by Wolves that we shoot in Cape Town, South Africa, sometimes it's more than a thousand people behind the camera. A thousand. One thousand fucking people. Whoa. So... No, it's, it's, it's bananas, you know. I'm on a show like Narcos, there might be like 200 people. And uh, uh, Assassin's Creed, there might be like a couple of hundred people. But here it's a fun. That. This is something insane. <laughs> it's insane. It's madness. You know, so, so it's a very, uh, to me, I got to say it's a humbling experience. You know, it's, it's, it feels like, you know, whatever happens in life, Mm-hmm. You know, uh, let's say I go out uh, with my kid now and buy ice cream and a truck runs over me and I die. Um, at least I got the feeling, you know, I got to work with Ridley Scott. I mean, that's uh, or for Ridley Scott. Mm-hmm. So, no, you know, that's that's something that I will never forget, whatever happens. And uh, right and, and uh, Wolves is inspiration to Alien. Do you think that? I mean, I'm not sure. Familiar, I mean, a little bit familiar, but... This is yeah, there's so something familiar. there. I mean, there's always that, like... Um, I think... Uh, there's a lot of interesting aspects of uh, of um, Race by Wolves. Um, maybe... I think that, obviously, you can tell that he's the one that's made both. You know? And uh, that aspect of, like... Um, artificial intelligence what's humanity really you know sometimes the characters in uh, in those sto- in these stories sometimes the the artificial intelligence is more human than the humans uh, that's something that i remember watching um, alien where where the artificial intelligence characters sometimes are more human and more compassionate than the humans And that's something that you can see also in in Race by Wolves. So there's definitely a a similar, you know, there's something there for sure. Yes, and we inviting to HBO Max in Poland, in Sweden, and international wherever you've been to watch the, to, to that series because it's incredible. But tell me the final questions. Who would you like to play in the future? Maybe you dream of a big blockbuster like Avengers or maybe something like, maybe you beat the new James Bond. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> That would have or, been something. 
Yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now. Or maybe someday you get the Oscars, or maybe everything of of this I said. Who knows, man? I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, James Bond, I think, is going to be difficult for me. But uh, maybe I can be a villain. Maybe I can be a James Bond villain, one of the bad bad guys in James Bond. You know, have a casting or like. Hmm. I mean, I would like that. Um, you know, I'll be honest with you. I'll be. I, I think it would be cool to to do some historical stuff. I've not sure. done a lot of that. So I would lo- I, I would love to do a little bit more of historical stuff. That would be really cool. Like stuff that is based on true stories, based on historical events. You know, that sort of thing would interest me. And uh, maybe some fantasy. I've never done fantasy. You know, I've done sci-fi now with with uh, Raised by Wolves. Um, maybe in, sh- the, in the Witcher. In, maybe yeah, in the Witcher. Not, yeah, you know, I mean, I shot a lot that of That is shooting in Poland, so I'm inviting you and we can talk Our, face-to-face yeah, I'll come someday. someday. Perf- I would, I'd love that. I mean, as I said the other day to a friend of mine, like I've shot a lot of people with guns, but I never, you know, I never had a sword on on a movie. Yes. So I'd like, I like to chop somebody up with a sword or, you know, with a, you know, what do you call it? Like um, uh, arrow? arrow. Arrow. Yes. So, you know, maybe something like that. That's but so I mean, cool. uh, I don't know. I mean, I'll be honest. I'm I'm happy, you know, that I can do this for a living. You know, and it's uh, and you are a rich man now, or or not not yet. Come you again? are rich for the, that job, or or rich? rich? No, I'm not. I mean, no, I'm not rich, but I'm comfortable. You know, I mean, I, I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm doing okay. very nice house. Yeah, it's big. You know, the kids are he- healthy, and um, I think that also the older you get the older you get, the more you realize that wealth or uh, being rich is freedom. It's not really, I mean... Yes, and we pray for Ukraine, for the peace in the world, of course. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, freedom is what, what's, what's, what's most important. And this job has allowed me to dedicate myself to what I love and to my family. So I don't have to go to work anymore. Like... I used to have to go up in the morning, you know, put the fucking clothes on and go to construction and shit like this. So you are But, almost on the retire. You're working because you want to, to uh, go to work, yes? Well, I'm, no, shit, no. I still need to make, no, I still, I still need to work. I think I expressed okay. myself. Uh, I, no, what I, what I meant is more, uh, I like, what I mean is like, because I like my job so much, It's almost not a job. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's a job. It's a job. But but at the same time, it's my hobby. It's my passion. So it doesn't really feel like a job. And most of the time, most the only price I pay, the only price that sometimes can be a big price, not only for me, but for a lot of people that do what I do and do stuff that's similar to what I do, is that you have long periods of time when you're away from your family. That can be quite difficult. Obviously, it's, it's easier now because of, uh, because of um, FaceTime and uh, Zoom and all of these things, Skype, or whatever. But, but that, that's the price you pay, really, to be away from, from family. Other than that, it's a privilege. So we're doing that what give us the happiness. Yeah. I mean, as happy as possible, you know what I mean? Like, also I think that one thing that I've learned and that I've done well, and I think that I've succeeded in this uh, better than a lot of my colleagues, is that I don't really compare myself to anyone. It's like... That's great. You know, like, I started working when I was 12, Um, scraping, you know, dishing, dishing, uh, what do you call it? You know, dishing in a fucking restaurant. Yeah. So, so for me, you know, I was nominated for an award. And, uh, and do I you jealous for a rule like your 
friend Pedro Pascal now played The Last of Us, uh, Mandalorian. You want that career for you? No. No. I mean, I, I, I love Pedro. He's a great actor. He's a nice. He's a nice guy. He's a nice human. You know, he's doing wonderful. Mm -hmm. But no, I don't want that life. I'm happy with my life, to be honest. I mean, this stuff that 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 I would like. You know, maybe I would like to do a little bit more of this or a little bit less so of that. What can I wish you? In, in the future, what do you want the, in the job, in the private life? Only happiness and and then, you know happiness and, and health. health. Yeah, kind health of is very important, of course. You know happiness and health, and you know uh, I mean, like uh, I'm pretty, I'm I'm pretty happy as it is. You know, I think. Uh, as it is, I'm pretty happy. I mean, I think that I'm very privileged. And, uh, you know, I lived in, um, I've been away for many years mm -hmm. doing what I do. And, you know, I, I live in you Cape Town. You have deserve that, so. Yeah, maybe I have, maybe I haven't. But one thing is for fucking sure, and that is that there's, there's a lot of, of, of stuff in this world that is beautiful and fantastic. And then there's a lot of stuff that's, that's really fucked up. And, uh, you know, when you are shooting in South Africa, there's a lot of poverty. There's a lot of disease. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of inequality. You know, a lot of people don't have food. They don't have water, you know, and uh, I have a chauffeur who drives my ass around and I, you know, stay in these luxury apartments or whatever, you know, they, so, so, uh, you know, the contrast of, of, um, of those two worlds mm -hmm. are, you know, you, you realize that you, you have a good life, you know, and that is, I sometimes, you know, I'd be like, ah, I want to do this part. Why didn't I get it? <laughs> Poor me. You know, and then you realize, like, wait a minute. You know, there's a war in the Ukraine. You know, they're, they're fighting over snow to melt the snow, to have water to drink. Yes. And, you know, and I'm crying about some fucking movie that I'm not going to be able to do because they gave the job to somebody else, you know. So sometimes you have to remind yourself that in the big, in the, you know, in the end of the day or in the big picture, you know, uh, one should try and be happy mm -hmm. with the life you have, you know. You have a right, I think. And that is the big conclusion of our conversation. We must I think try so. to be happy uh, and, and try to fight to the better world, I think. Yeah, I mean, do your best and, and, you know, make sure that that your characters that you portray are as interesting as possible for the audience. And and uh, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. and, and that's something that maybe has not helped my career. But the way I see my profession is that my my interest is that the audience, the ones at home watching, that they like what I do. To me, that's more important than what the industry thinks of me. And that's not necessarily a good thing. The best actors in the world might not be working that much. So it's a balance, you see what I'm saying? Like uh, a lot of the people that I know in the industry that work a lot, According to my experience or what I think, they're not necessarily the best performers, but they're really good at navigating the industry and making sure the people with power thinks they are great. But so we must learn to hear something else, to listen, and doing everything we can great 
and good. Yeah, try to do as best you can, definitely. Definitely. Whoever you are, whatever the fuck you're doing. My father, just gave, he gave me some advice when I was a small boy. He told me, like, whatever the fuck you do in life, whether it be, you know, a garbage man or, a, you know, chef or fucking engineer or football player or actor or singer or, you know, a university professor, try and find um, happiness in what you do and make sure you, uh, you are as good as you ever can be and never take anything for granted. You know, always remember that nothing is forever. Like if you don't do the best you do, somebody's going to take your place. And uh, sometimes I fuck up, but I always try. Once the camera goes red, once it's on and, and uh, the, the camera is rolling and they say action, I always take a nanosecond, even if it's supposed to be direct. I always like shut my eyes <laughs> and start and always remember that this might be the last time I do this. This might be the last take. And that's you something are, I always you are doing that in the mirror, you training your mimics or, or something too, or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to do that when I was younger. I think most actors have. I mean, if you said you've never done that, you're lying. Definitely. You know, you always like try to, 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 do, to do that in the bathroom mirror, for sure. I mean, and I think that most people also like already practiced their uh, Oscar exception speech. Like, I want to thank my mother. I want to thank my friends, my wife. You know, I want to tell my, you know, all of that stuff. I think that that comes with the territory, you know. Uh, oh wait! What's happening? It's my wife calling me on the other line. Are you still oh, there? Okay. Wait, my wife was calling me. No, so so it's like um, wait, what the fuck? You talk gosh. about the mirror. Yes, I I see you. I see you now. Oh, Everything cool, man. He's great. No, cool. I think I think that it's like. Um, I think most, you know, when you've done your 10,000 hours, mm -hmm. then you come to a point where you don't need to anymore. You know, because you I only, I, I, I focus more on reacting nowadays than acting, to be honest. Like, I learn my lines and then I just react to what everybody else is doing. And that makes me feel like... I don't character. hear you now. Oh, now, now it's no, great. No, I was saying that nowadays I just mm -hmm. try to react mm -hmm. on what my colleagues are doing uh, and not focus so, so much on what I'm saying, but more listening and trying to react and uh, making it as, as natural as possible. You know, the yeah. sort of less is more. That's true. Less is more sometimes. I think so, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I wish you the health. I wish you <laughs> so much money and <laughs> happiness. And happiness. Thank you. And the great rule, uh, the Oscars. And maybe we, we can see you in the next bonds. I wish you. Who knows? I hope so. I hope so. And thank you for your time. Uh, and you recall to your wife because I, I, many many time we spent to talk, and I think you are so tired. But no, it's cool, man. It's fine. Cool. Great. Yeah, yeah, so, for sure. So thank you very much for conversation. I hope we met sometimes in Sweden, yeah. Poland, and you in US. For sure. Where we we, we come. And I think you'll be happiness, you, your wife, and your child. And thank you for, for your time. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And all the best to you as well. I wish you all the best, man. Thank you very much. So, see ya. Okay. See you. Take it easy.